Hey everybody. What we're going to cover in this video is one of the new features in Isotope Ozone 7, the codec preview. Codec preview allows you to hear in real time what lossy audio compression will sound like on your final master. It comes in two flavors, MP3, which needs no introduction, and AAC, which is what iTunes uses. Codec Preview is included only with the advanced version of Ozone 7 and is one of the main reasons why you might want to consider upgrading from the standard version. Let's check it out. The song we're going to use to demo the Codec Preview is one of my own originals. It's the title track off my most recent EP, In the Wild. This track's already been mastered in Isotope Ozone 5, and I just want to hear, using the Codec Preview, what it's going to sound like before I compress it. So to find Codec Preview, we have Ozone 7 open, and we just go down into the bottom right corner, and you click on Codec, and you now see the GUI window for the Codec Preview. If you want to actually listen to the real-time encoding, you click on the speaker icon. So now we can toggle between MP3 and AAC. Let's start with AAC. Over here, you can select your bitrate. The bitrate is constant, so you can select your various flavors down to heavier and heavier compression. We'll start out at 320, and I'll let you hear the track. So you can hear as we decrease the bitrate, the quality of the result actually goes down substantially. And that follows what we would normally expect to hear from compression. Now, one of the more important things that I want you to pay attention to is what was happening in the metering up at the top, the output metering in Ozone. Watch again. I'm going to clear the meters and watch again as I begin to decrease the bitrate. Right there you see we actually get clipping. Now when I mastered this track, I intentionally left some margin for headroom, as I always do, as any good mastering engineer will. I left a 0.3 dB margin to allow enough headroom to avoid clipping in most major audio players. However, when you are compressing into a lossy format, there is rounding errors that are going to introduce noise. And that noise increases as you go down in bitrate. So if you're mastering for a lossy audio format like MP3 or AAC, you will typically want to leave yourself substantially more headroom than I did. If I'm mastering for iTunes or YouTube or SoundCloud, I will leave anywhere from 1 to 3 dB of margin on that. And that, again, is because you see it will clip if the compression is heavy enough. So we go down here and you're going to immediately see clipping. So we're over half a dB into the red here. And my original file was fine. So that's something that this is really useful for is seeing exactly how much of a margin you might need. And typically, Isotope recommends mastering for lossy audio formats. You're going to want to leave somewhere between 1 and 1.5 dB margin on your limiter. So let's go take a look at the MP3 encoder. One thing I will say comparing back and forth between these two uh, types of compression is AAC at the same bitrate actually sounds better. AAC is a superior form of encoding. So if you compare AAC at 256, which is the exact bitrate and format that iTunes uses, and MP3 at 256, AAC will actually produce less artifacts. Just a, a side note there for you guys. So let's start with MP3 now, and we're going to do the same process. We'll start up at 320 and gradually decrease. Now you'll notice there, even at 320, we are already getting clipping on the master. So that margin that you would leave with a limiter is ever more important when it comes to compressed lossy audio formats.
Okay, so there's our comparison between the AAC and MP3 encoder at various constant bit rates. I will point out that 128 kilobits per second MP3 is what SoundCloud uses for streaming, and a lot of you will be uploading your tracks to SoundCloud, so these are the exact settings that you'll use if you want to figure out what your track is going to sound like. So let's just compare that with the codec on and off. Another wonderful feature that this codec preview has is you can solo the codec artifacts. And what that does is it allows you to listen to just what is being removed from your audio by the encoding process. So check this out. I'll toggle that on and off. We'll start up at 320 and we'll go down to 19, uh, down to uh, 96. So a bit is being removed there, but not tons. Listen to it at 96. A lot of high end and a lot of stereo field information is being removed. Uh, I will point out that Isotope actually has a fantastic article on mastering for compressed audio formats. And they have a specific section of that article talking about how to master for SoundCloud. And it includes doing some narrowing to the very top band because SoundCloud's fairly heavy compression that they use with their encoder removes a lot of stereo field. So rather than putting that stereo field in there and having it stripped out, a lot of times it's better just to narrow that a little bit using Isotope's multiband stereo imager. Let's check out the AAC encoder and see what it's removing. This is a huge workflow improvement over what I used to have to do because when I was creating masters before, I'd have to export them from live open them up in another program that would do the compression, dial in the compression, export them from that program, and then re-import them back into live for analysis to make sure everything went okay. This allows me to do all of my work entirely inside of my DAW without ever having to leave it. I can do the final exports right from Ozone, and I know exactly what they're going to sound like and how to target my margin and my levels. So it really helps me to speed up my workflow as a mastering engineer. Now I want to go over some important notes and pro tips about using the codec preview. First of all, it does take quite a bit of CPU. Because it's doing this processing in real time, it's going to slam your CPU. Now, there's a couple things you can do to prevent that from overwhelming your computer. One of them is audio buffer. So inside of Live or any DAW, you're going to have preferences where you can control your audio buffer. In live, it's in the audio menu, and you can control your audio buffer right here. So one of the things I would recommend doing before mastering and doing this real-time preview is increase your buffer size. I have mine maxed out at 2048 samples. You can see that gives me quite a bit of output latency, but that doesn't matter because I'm not recording anything and live has delay compensation. So definitely don't have your buffer size down here. You're going to really fry your CPU pretty quick and it's not going to give you good results. If you get anything that sounds like bit crushing or drops in audio or pops and cracks, it probably just means that your computer is crapping out a little bit because your buffer size is too low. So that's the first tip. Next up, understand that it will add latency. Ozone in general, I find, adds latency. And that's okay, again, because most DAWs have some type of latency compensation. And when you're mastering, latency doesn't matter as much because you're not trying to play in or record things live. Latency matters more in the recording process and earlier in the production. But just understand that because this is fairly heavy-duty processing, it is going to add some latency. Next, it can't support files over 48K sample rate. Most of us are going to be producing in 44.1 or 48, say for film. Uh, if you try and load a 96 file into it or a 192 file into it, it is going to do real-time sample rate conversion, which again is going to increase latency and increase CPU load. So it's designed for 44.1 and 48K files. Also make sure that you understand that the codec preview is the very last module in the signal chain. So in Ozone, you're going to have the ability to do things like your equalizer. You're going to uh, be able to put in your exciter. You're going to be able to put in your maximizer and all that jazz. Codec preview is going to be the very last thing. And the main reason for that is because 
it adds that compression noise and you would never want that happening before other processes. So make sure that ozone, as it always should be, is the very last plugin in your chain. If you add anything after this, you're not going to get an accurate representation of what that codec preview is actually doing. Also, and this is kind of a facepalm duh point, make sure you turn it off before you do your final export. Otherwise, you're going to be compressing twice if you go to MP3 or AAC. But uh, yeah, it's been done before, so make sure you actually turn it off when you're ready to do your final renders. Lastly, really keep an eye on your export meters and make sure nothing is clipping here. If you look and you see clipping, that means that there's been compression noise that's been added and it's causing your signal to go over digital zero. How you will handle that is in Ozone's maximizer. You can see the maximizer, which is the limiter, has a ceiling parameter right here. And this is where I add my headroom. So if I'm mastering for a compressed audio format, I'll use a minimum ceiling of minus one dBFS, or in all likelihood, I'll use 1.5 maybe two, and sometimes upwards of three. So you got to understand the destination that your file is going to, if it's YouTube, if it's SoundCloud, if it's iTunes, and in general, Isotope recommends leaving anywhere from one to 1.5 dB margin right there on your maximizer, and then testing with the compression codec. That wraps up this tutorial on the codec preview in Ozone 7. We've got a whole playlist of other tutorial videos in Ozone 7, so make sure you check out our other vids. Also, head over to Isotope's website to grab the demo version so you can try this out for yourself. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay frosty on all of our updates, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.